In the previous tutorial, we learned about singleton resources versus per request resources. Uh, in this tutorial, I'm gonna talk about a unique use of param annotations and the implications that singleton lifecycle has on them. So in the first course, we talked about different types of param annotations. There was query param, there was path param, header param, cookie param. There were a bunch of param annotations which let us get information about the request into our resource variables and resource uh, method arguments, right? So I'm gonna start off with advanced JAX or project three, which is again, a copy of project one with just the name changed. Now in, in here, I have my resource. Now I'm gonna make a few changes to this resource. The first thing I'm gonna do is introduce a path param over here. So I'm gonna say path param slash test. So it's not just slash test, web API slash test anymore, it's web API slash something slash test, okay? And uh, I can send in some query parameters as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a bunch of uh, member variables, two member variables in fact. So I'm gonna create um, path param example, which is a string, query param example, which is another string. So these are two member variables of my resource class. Now, we talked about getting the path param and the query param in your resource methods by annotating the arguments with the right annotations, right? So you could do a at path param and give it a param name, and then you could have another at query param and access the query parameter as well, right? What's interesting is these annotations actually apply to member variables as well, right? So I can actually do a at path param for the member variable. I need to pass in the parameter name, of course, and here it's path param. Now I can do a at query param here, and I'm gonna send in query as the query param. Okay, let me import path param and query param. So it's essentially the same as what we did last time. In the previous course, we had method arguments that were annotated. Now we have member variables that are annotated. Now I can change this to print out path param used is path param example. Query param example. Okay, does this make sense? It's exactly the same as what we did before, but we are annotating the member variables rather than the method arguments. Now let me save and run this. Now the API is accessed at web API slash some path param value slash test question mark query equals query param value. Now here you see you get the path param value from here and the query param value from here. Now think about why this works. This works because this instance is getting created after you make this request. So there's a new instance per request. So when this request gets to the server, JaxRS creates a new instance. When it creates an instance of my resource, the member variables are all gonna be initialized to blank values, right? But what's gonna happen is when you have these annotations, JaxRS is gonna say, okay, now I have these values in the request. So it's gonna set those values to the member variables of the instance of this resource class that's supposed to handle this, right? So since it's since the instance is getting created after the request, it has all these values to populate, right? It's gonna populate that and it's accessible at the method level, okay? That's not very different from having those in the method itself, right? Because this instance is just for that one request you're not gonna be able to access this in other 
methods because it's only this method gets run when you make a get request to this path and then the class gets destroyed, right? The instance gets destroyed. The reason why you would wanna choose this versus having method arguments over here is if you're making a bunch of calls to other methods in this class, which all need to access these member variables, if you have them as method arguments, you need to pass them around to all these different methods. But if you have them at the class level, all the methods of this class can access it, right? So that's one reason why you would wanna have member variables annotated with these param annotations rather than method arguments, okay? So I'm looking at just path param and query param here, but this applies to all param annotations, right? All the different things that you can pick from a request are accessible at the member variable level. Now, the interesting thing is, what happens if I make this a singleton? Now, this instance gets created before the request, right? So this could be request three, and it could still be the same instance that's serving it. Now, we might have a problem. I'm gonna save this, and uh, let's see what the error is. Let me expand this. And if you scroll over here, you see what the error says. It says validation of the application resource model has failed. So there is a resource validation that's happening. What is the validation error? Parameter, this is the path param example, of my resource cannot be injected to a singleton resource. Does that make sense? because the singleton resource gets created before the request. So this injection cannot happen if the resource is a singleton. If the resource instance were to be created during the request for the sake of a request, then that injection is possible because it gets created then. But if in the case of a singleton, you cannot have path param, all these param annotations for member variables. You can have it only for method arguments because the instance gets created way before the request comes in, okay? I hope that made sense. This is an important distinction to have if you're working with a lot of singleton resources.